Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in this video we're going to talk about some new changes that just got announced for Shadowlands that are going to be relevant in both Mythic Plus and Raid. So this is from a blue post that came out one hour and 17 minutes ago, while I was asleep, uh, that says, changes to combat potions. In this next build of the Shadowlands Alpha, combat potions such as primary stat potions and mana potions now have a five minute cooldown. Additionally, they are no longer limited to one use per encounter. So they're no longer going to go on cooldown, or not go on cooldown, but like not go on cool. You know, they are now going to go on cooldown when you use them, even if you're in combat, which they currently don't do. They currently don't start going on cooldown until you exit combat, right? This is intended to make potion use less of a hassle, less expensive, and more decision-oriented in various situations throughout the game. In raid encounters, players will still have the option of using a potion at the start of an encounter, but using a potion just prior to and as close to the pull as possible will no longer be required. Longer encounters will now offer up more than one moment to use a potion for maximum tactical advantage. Ending a raid boss encounter with a wipe or a win will reset the potion cooldown. That's really good. Do not want to be out here waiting five minutes for my potion cooldowns every pull. I don't know if any of you played in Legion, but we would do this for a, a ring called, called Nod Thumb Ring sometimes. Uh, that had it here. Let me, let me see if I can find this tooltip here. Nod Thumb Ring. This thing here, which is a, a three minute cooldown that didn't actually reset when you dropped combat. And some people, some depending on who you were playing with in your guild, sometimes they'd make you wait for this. Um, Mostly Blizzard has done a good job of making it so you'd never have to wait more than like two minutes to pull the boss uh, because everything longer than two minutes resets and it's good that this potion is now going on that list as well. In dungeons, spacing out potion use will place more emphasis on deciding the most important times to use them. And then some PvP stuff that I have no context on so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, so let me talk about my thoughts on this thing, this change in general. I actually think that this change, so I haven't had that long to think about it. I may end up coming up with some other spots that it's scary, but for the most part, I think this is kind of cool. I think this is kind of great. Um, I, okay, one problem right now with the game is that if you potion, you know, 0.1 seconds before the pull, it's really good. And if you potion 0.1 seconds after the pull, it's really bad. So removing that like hard break point on using your potion before getting in combat, it can feel really stupid because sometimes like sometimes the combat takes instantly, sometimes it takes like a second to get you in combat. Uh, sometimes you just get put in combat by weird stuff or you know, especially in Mythic Plus, combat can be a weird thing. In Mythic Plus in particular, there are a couple of good side effects to this change. Side effect number one is that effects like Vanish, Shadow Meld, Feign Death. One thing that people would do with these, especially in an MDI setting, is that they would vanish to get their potion to start cooling down again. You know, they would, or they would vanish and then drink a potion and then, you know, re-enter combat. And that way they would be able to keep potioning once every minute instead of potioning once every combat uh, or, you know, in a, only potioning before combat. Uh, so that is, I think, a, a good side effect there, nerfing those effects. Another powerful, another good thing that this is doing in Mythic Plus is buffing invis potions because... Right now, the opportunity cost of an invis potion is like, you're going to miss out on three or four other potions. With this change, you're going to miss out on one other potion use. So uh, the, the cost has gotten lower for using an invis pot in a, in a dungeon. And that, I think, is pretty cool. The, po the cost, cost has also gotten lower to use other utility potions, right? Like a, a Lightfoot or whatever, a Skystep, those sorts of things in Mythic+. Plus you're no longer going to be... I guess th there it's about... It's actually about the same. Either way, you're giving up on one potion use, one DPS potion use. It's mostly the invis pot because of the longer cooldown the invis pot was on. Now that's being normalized to what the other potions are on. In raid, I actually think that this is going to be pretty good as well for mythic raiding. I think that in mythic raiding, you're going to be in these... You, you know, you're in these places where uh, maybe, for, maybe for heroic or speed kills, once you are already done with progression... This is going to reduce the amount of potions that you have per encounter. Uh, but I think that it's going to do a good job of actually making it so that there is a choice about when you should use your potions. You know, as a raid in a mythic boss fight, you can now be like, all right, look, you know, we're going to potion at two minutes to make this check. And then we're going to potion again at eight minutes. Uh, and then that's, you know, that's our plan for potioning on this fight. And I think most end bosses are going to end up in that place where you can get maybe two or even three potions. Uh, any boss fight that gets, you know, over 10 minutes, you're starting to get to the range where you could get three potions if you use them on cooldown, or you can get two if you use them at specific times. Uh, you could find a spot instead to use a light foot or whatever, and that could use up one of your potion uses as well. 
Pre-pots are still, I think, generally, like, I think generally people are going to use potions on their opener. The opener is when everybody has all, all of their cooldowns, uh, and I think that that is mostly still going to be a use, especially if you're bloodlusting there. Um, but there's now a new component where you're not going to potion on pull anymore. You're not going to potion and then do your, like, three, <laughs> you know, barb shots to start building up. You're actually, you're going to save your potion for when you actually start doing damage, right? Uh, so you can you can start saving your potion and just using it on your actual like first damaging global after you hit your big big cooldown, right? And if you're a player who doesn't like thinking about potions, you can actually this is a change that makes it so you can think less. So the the benefit for thinking more about your potions has gone up here with this, I'd say. Uh, in you know the 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 strategy of just pre-potting every time and not really worrying about it beyond that uh, be before every pull has now been destroyed, right? That that strategy has gone away. An even easier strategy has been added for people who want an easy strategy that is slightly less rewarding, which is you can just macro your potion into your big cooldown or whatever. Like you just macro your, your agipot into your, you know, into your vendetta or whatever. And you're going to just agipot whenever it's off cooldown, whenever you hit vendetta and bang, you know, you're, you're doing great there. Uh, you're doing fine. You, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's basically become another thing that can get macroed in if you want. Or... You can use it tactically, and that, I think, is is going to be valuable. I think there's going to be some value in figuring out exactly when to use these things. So uh, that is something that I think is also good here. I think it's good to raise the floor and raise the ceiling on how effective combat potions can be, and I think that this is going to do both. So all in all, I think this change looks really cool. have to see exactly how it plays. I like the idea of lose it, using fewer total potions in a, in a high-level Mythic Plus dungeon as well. Uh, that's going to be nice to not go through you know 20 of them, to only go through 5 or 6 of them in a dungeon and have each of them matter more. Let's talk about one more change that's coming out in Shadowlands briefly in this video. Uh, this one is a tyrannical Mythic Plus affix change that's been detected in Shadowlands. This isn't a blue post, this is just from Squishy, who has uh, found this in the Shadowlands Alpha. Tyrannical now says bosses have 40% more health, bosses and their minions inflict up to 15% increased damage. Uh, so this part is basically unchanged. This is currently how Tyrannical works. This part has been changed to no longer affect boss minions, but give bosses 40% more health, which I think it was 30% uh, that Tyrannical had been nerfed to at some point earlier. So uh, Tyrannical, the boss scaling has gone up here. This is something that I'm a little bit conflicted on still. I, I think that 40% more health is just so much more health uh, that it's going to still be pretty boring to do just a like these boss fights can just get to to so long durations uh, and i don't think that this really solves it i do hope that what this means is that they are in shadowlands going to carefully code the bosses and the other effects on a boss fight such that they all scale predictably with you know i guess mostly just not with either affix but uh with tyrannical when they do because in bfa right now there are several boss fight mechanics that counterintuitively scale with Fortified. I have a spreadsheet here. I'll link this in the uh, in the description here. But this is like a this is a spreadsheet that somebody put together. I actually don't remember who that has a list of like which effects scale with Fortified and which effects scale with Tyrannical. Like Energy Core on Galv. That's the just the damage that you get from the from soaking the beams. That just scales with Fortified and not Tyrannical. You know, Mogul Razdunk, these abilities scale with Fortified, not Tyrannical. So hopefully, hopefully these lists, th this list in Shadowlands is more consistent and doesn't require somebody to go and get two logs from each dungeon and compare the numbers to see whether something is affected by Fortified or by Tyrannical. Um, I do think it makes sense to not scale the boss minion health as well. I think, th I think that's good, but I would still like to see... I'd like to see this number go down here. I'd like to see that bosses not get this much more health. Uh, I don't think it's a huge problem in lower keys, but when you start getting to, like, even MDI level keys, like, even the 19s or whatever that the last MDI was at, but especially when you start getting to, like, 23s, 25s, 27s, boss fights are just such slogs, and they get so boring with this much more health because you can't really give them that much more damage, right? Like, you give you give them more than 15% increased damage, and they actually have this up to wording here to make it so that they don't have to give every ability 15% increased damage. There are some abilities that they don't want to do that to because they're already pretty close to one-shots pretty quickly. Um, but 
I don't know, like you can't do much more than that because then then the the key just becomes becomes one shotty at such a low keystone level. Uh, either way, I think that this is a slightly good change, but tyrannical still somebody needs to fix it. <laughs> somebody needs to take a look at tyrannical and really figure out if it's doing more good than harm. Uh, and I don't know, maybe maybe if you're convinced that tyrannical is something that's worth saving, which I'm not. Uh, maybe try and come up with some creative solution here that's not just slightly re removing around where the numbers go. Maybe there's some way that you can make tyrannical that isn't purely numbers based. You know, maybe there's a way you can make tyrannical that empowers abilities but doesn't actually make boss fights into seven year long encounters. Or maybe there's a way that you can empower just like one boss per run with tyrannical. Like, what if tyrannical turned one boss in each dungeon run into like a actually tough long boss fight that's fine but it didn't affect all of the other bosses in the dungeon and so it didn't have this effect where you're just spending most of your life in the dungeon fighting bosses to no end seemingly anyways those are just some of my ideas on tyrannical i've, I've talked a little bit more about it in other other contexts but uh i think this is a slightly good change to an affix that is still doing more harm than good to exist all right that's my thoughts on the changes here that have been announced for shadow lines today let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.